Linkage transformation. Using only Revolut joints in a linkage can be very limiting. Luckily, we can modify linkages and joints in several ways to create many useful mechanisms. When we modify the joints and or links, we are performing a linkage transformation. We'll consider six transformation rules. The first is that we can replace a Revolut joint by a prismatic joint and not change the degree of freedom of our mechanism. For example, on the left, consider this mechanism called a Grashoff crank rocker. It has four links, a ground link, a crank here in red, a coupler shown here in black, and an output rocker here shown in red. As the Revolut joint at the end of the crank moves around this circle, this rocker output link swings back and forth through this shaded area. However, according to the transformation rule number one, if we replace this Revolut joint with a prismatic joint here, we get a slightly different motion. In this particular mechanism, we have a Grashoff slider crank instead of a Grashoff crank rocker. The meanings of these terms will become more evident as we go on with the course. But suffice it to say at this time that as this Revolut joint at the end of the crank follows this circular path, this slider block slides back and forth. Where you see the dotted sliders are the, um, ex the, the furthest position that the slider block goes to the left and to the right. In a way, you can think of this motion to be similar to this motion if the effective link were shorter. When it goes back and forth straight, as is shown here, the effective length is really pivoted at infinity. Both of these cases have a degree of freedom equal to one because we have four lengths and four full joints. A full joint here, 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 and here in the Grashoff crank rocker. In the Grashoff slider crank, we have a full joint here, revolute, 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 and prismatic for the slider. Our second transformation rule is that we can replace a full joint by a half joint. If we do this, it adds one additional degree of freedom per joint. Our third rule is that if we remove a link completely, we reduce the degree of freedom by, of the mechanism by one. The fourth rule is a combination of rules two and three. If we combine the above second and third rule, we get no change in the degree of freedom. As you can imagine, if we replace a full joint by a half joint, that adds one additional degree of freedom. But then if we remove a link, we reduce the degree of freedom by one. So if we do both together, we cancel out our change and we'll have no change in our degree of freedom. Let's take a look or an example of rules two and three combined um, where we both replace a full joint by a half joint, and then get rid of a link. This was our original linkage up here at the top, a four bar Grashoff crank rocker. In this case at the left, we have removed the full joint that was at this location and replaced it with a half joint. But a pin and a slot, you may recall, is a half joint. So we still have our ground link, we still have our crank, which is our link two, and we have this kind of T-shaped link here, which is our third link. So we've taken away a link. We no longer have four links as in our original linkage. And we no longer have a full joint at this location, but instead we have a half joint. So we have three links, one, two, and then the T-shaped link, three. So three links go into our um, Grubler's equation. We have two full joints, a Revolut joint here and a prismatic joint here. So two full joints, and we have one half joint right here where we have our pin and our slot. Well, all of that combines, according to Grubler, to still give us one degree of freedom as we had with our original linkage. Let's turn our attention to link B. It's slightly different in that the slot is straight, where here that slot was curved. With a curved slot, 
the motion of this effective link is the same as the motion of our output rocker. It goes back and forth with the same amount of time and same amount of speed as, as it did. And we can see that if we had a video of it. In this particular um, linkage in B, this second transformation, we've done the same thing. We've replaced the full joint that was here with a half joint at this location, and we've gotten rid of one of our links. So Grubler's equation remains the same. We still have a one degree of freedom mechanism. However, in this particular case, the name, the formal name for this mechanism is called the Scotch yoke mechanism, and it has perfect prismatic, I'm sorry, it has perfect uh, periodic motion back and forth. Finally, let's look at this linkage C at the bottom. Here we have a cam follower. It is also an example of combining rules two and three. We again only have three links instead of four. We have a ground link, we have the cam, and we have the follower. We have two full joints, a full joint here and a full joint here. And again, we have one half joint here at the center where the cam and follower meet. So we have removed one link and we've replaced a full joint with a half joint, giving us again one degree of freedom. Rule 5 of our transformation rule says that we can collapse higher order links to lower order and create multiple joints, but this does not change our degree of freedom. And we'll see an example of this in a second. By higher order, we mean links that have more than, um, more than, one, more than two nodes. We can also complete, do complete shrinkage, which is equivalent to removal, and we'll see an example of this in a second also. Okay, on the left, we have a partial shrinkage where we're going to collapse a link to one of lower order. Here you see a ternary link. It has three nodes. However, we're going to partially shrink it so that it ends up having just two nodes. So it goes from being a ternary link to being a binary link. And when we do this, we have no change in the degree of freedom. So we started off with one, two, three, four binary links and two ternary links. We now have one, two, three, four, five binary links and one ternary link, but still our degrees of freedom is equal to one. So partial shrinkage, this is an example of our fifth transformation rule. We have collapsed the ternary link into a binary. Complete shrinkage is just like removing a link, and that's an example of our sixth rule. We have um, one, two, three, four binary links and two ternary links, but we have completely shrunk this ternary link. In other words, we've taken it from three nodes down to one, which means the link is completely gone. And in that case, we've gone from one degree of freedom to zero degree of freedom. So partial shrinkage does not decrease our degree of freedom, but complete shrinkage does. It take, took us from one degree of freedom to zero degrees of freedom. And that's the conclusion of our transformation rules.